welcome everyone to church. Let's all stand and read the scripture together. Uh, today we're reading from Ephesians 4, 16, uh, 11 to 16. Uh, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Um, let's all pray together before we start. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here um, as one church, as one body to worship you. Uh, we give you all the glory in everything we do, Lord. And um, we just look forward to the day that we get to see you and in heaven. And until then, we pray that you use us um, to glorify you, uh, to tell people about what you've done, sending your son Jesus uh, on the cross to die for our sins, Lord. We just thank you and give you all the glory. In your son Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.
and everywhere present. And if the angels can see you, that means the demons and Satan can see what you're doing. So, we in a theater, whatever you do, we have visible and invisible audience watching you. So that's very important that we don't do something that we shouldn't be doing. Now sometimes we feel that if I'm doing something in a closed door, in a room, nobody's around, I can do something that no one would see. <laughs> do you think so? The audience in the invisible world can see whatever you're doing. Angels can see you, God can see you, demons and Satan can see you. Even though you don't see them, they can see you. So whatever we do is very important. We can pretend to be something or to be a good person when we are around people. We can put on a smile, a nice show around people that we see. But what you're really inside, how you act to a certain situation, we have the invisible audience. So that's something we have to be conscious of. So don't just pretend to be something you're not. Now, So what should we be doing? We should have the same goal to do whatever Jesus is doing. Jesus is saying to the Father, in John chapter 17, we call this the priestly prayer, that Jesus says, praying to the Father, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Jesus was going towards the end of his earthly ministry and he said that to the Father, I have done all the things you have assigned me to do. And this should be our goal for each Christian, to do what God has assigned us to do. We have different roles. Some of you um, are students right now. Some of you are parents. Some of you might be going to be a manager in a company, some of you are engineers, some of you might be a post, post uh, worker, some of you could be a factory worker. Whatever you're doing, be faithful to do what God wants you to do. And that's what it comes because we have audience watching us. Now, how you act or react to a situation is very important because people are seeing you. So when everything is going well, we are happy. We are bouncing around, we are praising God. But when things don't go right, what do we do? The easiest way for us to release our negative emotion is to complain, right? <laughs> I'm sure we all have complained in one way or another. But is it a good way to release our negative emotions? Now sometimes we don't understand why bad things happen to us. We trust in God. We come to church faithfully every Sunday. And you might even come more than once to the church during the week and you might be doing something to serve God, and then sometimes bad situations happen to us, and we don't understand why. Now if we go to uh, John chapter 11, we see a very familiar story. If you come to church over one year, I'm sure you have heard of this story at least once. Now you remember Lazarus? It says here in John chapter 11 that he was very, very sick. And so his sisters, Martha and Mary, sent words to Jesus to come. And they sent words to Jesus, Jesus, the one you love is sick, please come. 
that Jesus really, really loved Lazarus. They are very close friends. And so Martha and Mary said, please come, Lazarus is sick. Now when Jesus was on earth, there were three main things that Jesus was doing. <coughs> Teaching, preaching, and healing the sick. So, everyone knew at that time that Jesus was healing the sick people. So they knew that if Jesus would come, they, then Lazarus would be healed. So that's why they sent words to Jesus to come. But if we read in John chapter 11, Jesus did not come right away. He delayed for two more days. And then he said to the disciples, now is the time to go to wake Lazarus up. And so the disciples said, wow, to wake him up, that means he must be well. Well enough that he could, you know, like rest. And Jesus said, no, Lazarus is dead. And then in verse 15, Jesus says something very, very interesting. He says that, I am glad I was not there. Wow. Now, if someone else says this, you would think that that person is very cold. Like, we all want to say goodbye to the person that's dying. You be really careful of that person. Even for a loved one, very close relatives, when we know they're dying, we would even fly there if we are far away from that person, just to say goodbye to that person. But Jesus says, I'm glad I wasn't there. Because Jesus was go going to do something greater. Now what happens if, if Jesus went there earlier and prayed for Lazarus, I'm sure Lazarus would be healed from his sickness, whatever sickness that is. But Jesus did not go there right away because Jesus wanted to do a greater miracle. So if Jesus prayed for Lazarus and he was healed, everyone was happy. Yeah! Praise God! But they've never seen someone being raised from the dead. And from that Jesus said, taught them a great lesson. Jesus told them, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Jesus wanted to do something greater, so that's why he allowed situations to come. So sometimes when we don't understand why bad things happen to us, we pray, and yet we don't get the answer we want. Situation might get even worse than that, so what do we do? Don't complain. Sometimes we are more than complaining. We are complaining that this God might not even be real. I pray to him and I don't get what I want. He must not be real. And sometimes we even threaten God. Okay, you don't give me what I want. I'm not even going to go to church anymore. I'm not even going to be a Christian because I don't get what I want. Now, because we don't know what's going to happen. We can only see what's happening now. Just like Mary and Martha, they did not know that Jesus was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. We know because we look back to something that already happened. They didn't know. So we as Christians, we don't know what's going to happen the next hour, the next day, the next week. So what we do, we have to respond in a good Christian way. Now let's look at Paul when he wrote the book of Philippians. He was in prison. When you hear the word prison, you know that it's not a five-star hotel. You know that the food wouldn't be good. You wouldn't have lobsters and steaks every day. 
Now, more than that, Paul did not do anything wrong to deserve to be put in prison. He was doing everything that God wanted him to do. He was telling people about God. He was preaching, following God's will. And yet he was in prison. So from our human point of view, he has every right to complain, to blame God. But that's not a godly way. If we read the book of Philippians, we see that full of the book of Philippians, he's saying rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. To have the joy in the Lord. Now, joy and peace would be something within you. No one can take it away. But happiness is on the outside. Someone can snatch it. And then you lose your happiness. Uh, some time ago, I watched on YouTube a uh, little girl, maybe two or three years old, was in a zoo holding an ice cream cone. Was very happy, like king on her ice cream cone. And then suddenly a giraffe came down and snatched the ice cream cone. <laughs> that poor girl, that happiness could be snatched away in one second. That disappointment on her face was just... <laughs> That made me feel so bad for her. But that's happiness. It's on the outside. You get happy because of outside environment, but joy is within inside. No one can take it away. It doesn't matter how bad the surrounding is, how bad the situation is. No one can take it away. And more than that, besides telling people to rejoice in the Lord and first uh, the first chapter of Philippians, Paul is saying because of his imprisonment, other Christians are having more faith in God to preach the gospel. They are more courageous. Wow. Not only was Paul not complaining about being in prison, he was praising God because he was in prison. It encouraged other Christians to do even more for God. Can you imagine that? And then in verse 21, Paul is saying, For to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Now, he didn't know about the future, but he assumed that he was going to die in prison. So he said, doesn't matter if I die. That is to gain. For me to live Every breath that I'm taking, I live for Christ. And if I die, it's to gain. So, instead of complaining, sometimes things don't make sense to us. Instead of complaining, we have to just give thanks to God. Now, How do we face an adverse situation when things are not going the way, way we want it? First of all, we have to keep in mind that God is in control. I don't know why this happened, but I just know that God is in control of the situation. Don't complain because we don't know what's going to happen. We just believe that God is in control. Sometimes people say, well, I never experienced the grace of God. You know why? God's grace is upon you all the time. But sometimes we are not aware of God's grace. We just say, I was so lucky, blah, blah, blah. No, as Christians, we don't go by luck. Nothing happens to us by coincidence. Everything that happens to us because of God's grace, we're in God's hand. He's in control of everything that happens to us. So remember, when things don't go right, not the way we expect, keep in mind that God is in control. 
And number two is keep trusting in God. Now last week we talked about the genuine faith. If you really have a genuine faith in God, you know that He is God and He loves me. So then we can trust in Him. So even though sometimes we don't understand things, just keep trusting Him. If He tells you something, do it. If He tells you not to do, don't do it. Just trust Him. Don't judge it because of your own human understanding. Like last week we talked about Abraham. When God told him to leave his father's house, that's scary. Go to an unknown place that God is leading. And he did. That's called genuine faith. And then he had only one son and God says, sacrifice your son to me and he was doing that, putting Isaac on the altar and he was going to kill Isaac as a sacrifice and God says, stop. Now he didn't know all these things beforehand. He was just trusting God, following what God told him to do. And then looking back, then he could see God's grace. So just keep trusting in God. Now sometimes we don't get what we ask for. Like, if a person is praying to God, God, our supervisor is going to retire in two months and I really want that job to have a promotion and have a raise in my salary. Please give me that job. So, a few weeks after he prayed, what happens? His company closed down, went bankrupt. Not only did he not get the job, he lost his job. So it's easy to just complain, you didn't hear my prayer. My situation is going from bad to worse. Now maybe a few months later, God provides him a job with a better position, better pay, pay and then better environment, better co-workers. So God is in control. Just keep trusting Him. He does not give us second best. He always gives us the first best, the very best. So even if situation doesn't go the way we want, hold on to God's promises that He is gone. And number three, thank God for being our God. Now sometimes we give thanks to God for good things. If I got a, a raise in my pay, wow, thank, thank you Lord. My boss gave me a good raise. And if you, you receive something good, then you thank God for the good things. Yes. We should thank God for all the good things. But you know what? The Bible tells us not just to thank God for the good things. In Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5 it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And then in verse 5 tell us why we praise God. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You thank God and praise God not because you receive all this good thing. You thank God because He's faithful. You thank God because His love endures forever. You thank God because God is God. That's why we thank God. Not because of your race, not because of all the good things around you. Yes, we thank God when we get all these good things. But more than that, we thank Him because He is our God. That is the genuine faith we talked about last week. How do we know that we have genuine faith? It's when bad things happen, you don't complain. Now, 
how we act or react is very important. Just remember we always have visible audience and invisible audience. How we act to a situation, you want the angels to be clapping for you, you want God to be happy. So when you act in a godly way, when you react in a godly way, angels will be clapping. God would be happy, would be pleased to see us. You, want, you don't want to act and react in a way that the demons are happy and clapping. No, please do not do that. Always remember, whatever you do, whether in the open or in secret, we have audience looking at us. Always do it in a godly manner. Our God is a good God. He's in control of your situation. He loves you so much that He would not even give you second best. When you trust Him, He gives you the very, very, very best. Even though we don't understand in certain situations. Now I'm going to give you a testimony that happens to me. It, it really blessed me in such a way how good God is. Now, a few months ago, in December, on Christmas Day, my husband and I went to our daughter's house to have a, a lunch to celebrate Christmas. So then we had a good meal, opening gifts, and then we played some games, and then we drove home. That was about five o'clock in the evening. And my husband is not too mobile. He has to use a walker to walk. And so I parked the car right in front of our door. And then I opened my car door and then I went around to the back of the passenger side to try to get his walker out. And he already opened the door and he walked out. And then he lost his balance and he collapsed on the ground there and he hit his head on the cement ground there. And so <laughs> I was in a panic. I said, Eric, Eric, are you okay? He didn't answer me. For about two minutes, there was no response from him. I thought he was dead. And then finally he was moaning and groaning and I said, Eric, are you okay? He, he kind of said, yeah, like that. And so I tried to get him up, so I used my hand to help lift his head. And then I looked at my hand, it was full of blood. I said, Eric, you're bleeding. I got to call an ambulance. So I ran back inside the house to dial 911. When I was talking to the operator, a young girl came up to my house because I left the front door open. She said, do you know there's a man lying on the ground outside the house? I said, I know, I'm just talking to 911 operator right now. And then what happened was, now this girl and her brother were grandchildren of our neighbors. So they came with their parents for Christmas dinner celebration. Do you know, I thank God for good, God's timing and for sending the right people to come to help. Now, these people were related to the neighbors across the parking lot from where we live. And God sent the right people. Because I was in such a panic, I didn't know what to do, how to react to the situation. And these people, the, the grandparents, were so wise. It was pouring rain at that time, and they were holding an umbrella to cover Eric. 
and he put blankets on him because that's winter time and wet and cold. They put blankets and they told me to go get a clean towel to put behind Eric's head when he was on the ground. Now these are all very sensible things to do. But I was in such a panic, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't think straight. But God sent the right people to tell me what to do and they did the right thing. Why I say the right people? Because if they send another old lady like me and think <laughs> in such a panic, would not know all these things. And it was the right timing because it's Christmas. Otherwise, like winter time, it gets very dark at five o'clock already and it's pouring rain. No one would be walking outside there and no one would see Eric lying on the ground there to come to help. But it was Christmas and they were just coming for the dinner. And if they came two minutes before Eric on the ground, they wouldn't see Eric there. They wouldn't go get the grandparents to come. But it's just the right timing for the right people. So I thank God for his grace. Now I'm not thanking God for Eric's falling down and breathing and all that, but I thank God, I don't know why God allowed that to happen. But it happened so that I can see God's hand upon his children. So in every adverse situation, when things don't go right, instead of complaining, we trust that God is in control. We keep trusting Him, and we thank Him that He is God. Now, something that happened just a few weeks ago too. If you watch TV, you would know that there was an attempted assassination on Donald Trump, right? Okay, now he was talking like that in a rally and then he was just referring to the child. He just turned his head one second and the bullet just grazed his ear. Now can you imagine if he did not turn, that bullet would march into his head, he would be gone. Now then we can say, why didn't God make the bullet fly over his head? Why did the bullet graze his ear and was bleeding? I don't know if he needed plastic surgery to patch his ear. I don't know if he has any hearing loss because of that. I don't know anything about it. But God allowed the bullet to graze his ear. So that's an adverse situation, but we can see God's grace is upon him. If, if, if the bullet flew over his head, then we would not give God the thanks. We say, oh wow, that structure did not aim really well. But because it just grazed his ear, we knew that shooter's aiming was really, really accurate. If he didn't turn his head, it would be in his head. So then, that adverse situation, making his ear bleeding to show us that God's hand was upon the situation. See, sometimes when bad things happen, instead of complaining, just say, God, I don't know why this happened. I just know that you are my God. I know that you're going to give me the very best. I know that you're in control of the situation. Just give God the glory. Just remember we have visible and invisible audience. When people see that you're complaining, they say, wow, your God is lousy. Your God did not help you. But when they see that in an adverse situation, you don't complain, you say, I don't understand, but I trust God will work this out for the very best. Your visible audience would say, wow, your God is real. Your invisible audience, the angels will be clapping for you. The demons will be very disappointed that they could not attack you because you're giving God the glory, even though you don't understand how it's going to turn out. 
So in every adverse, bad situation, we still can see God's hand upon our lives. We still can praise God. We don't know why sometimes we joke about when we go to heaven, I'm going to ask God why. <laughs> but I think when we get to heaven, we'll be too busy praising God, enjoying God's glory. We won't be thinking of all these petty things on earth because it's so glorious when we get to heaven. We're going to be just full of joy meeting God face to face. Now we're going to come to the communion table right now and to remember how good God is. Why do we have the communion? Because we want to remember how much God loves us. God gave us his only begotten son. God did not withhold the very best. He gave us the very best, his only son, to die on our behalf. And Jesus, in his total obedience, obedience to the Father, he died on the cross for us. His body was broken for us. His blood was shed to wash away all of our sins. So we come before the communion table to know that our God is a good God. We can totally trust in Him and to praise Him. We're going to have a word of prayer before we partake the communion. Heavenly Father, thank you that you give us your very best. We thank you that you did not withhold your love and your grace from us. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on our behalf to save us. Thank you, Jesus, for your total obedience to the Father that we're going to have this bread and this cup to remember your goodness. And someday we're going to be with you in heaven to partake the banquet again. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. With a thankful heart, let's partake the bread together. And in the same token, with a thankful heart, let's partake the cups together. <coughs> now, if you know my style of preaching, I always ask you to come out to pray to respond to the message. If you truly believe in the word of God, what he says, you will respond by faith to the word of God. So, if you want God to help you in every adverse situation you're going through, I'm not sure about your, your own personal life, maybe you have financial difficulty, maybe you have health issues, maybe you have some relationship problems, whatever it is. If you truly believe God can help you through it all, God has a greater purpose for you, I invite you to come out to pray and say, God, I need your help. I want to have more strength in you to hold on to your promise. I want to believe more that you're in control. I want to trust you more. I want to say that, thank God that you are my God. If that's your situation, I invite you to come out to pray. And if you want God to give you more joy in your life, like Paul wrote about in 
Philippians to rejoice in whatever situation. If you want to have more joy in your life, I invite you to come out to pray and say, God, help me to have more joy. If God, if you want to be a good witness to the visible audience and the invisible audience around you, to hold on to your faith in God, I invite you to come out to pray, yes, God, help my life, help whatever I do to be a good testimony to the visible audience and the invisible audience. If this is a situation, I invite you to come out to pray. Now the altar is open for you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are a great God. Thank you that you love us so much that you want to give us your very best. Father, please help us. Whatever situation we are going through, that you would give us strength to handle. Help us to trust you more and to always remember that you are in control. Help us to praise you in whatever situation we are facing and give you all the glory. Father, we pray that you, you would increase our joy in our hearts and you would give us more strength. Help us to live a good testimony to our visible audience and the invisible audience that you and you alone receive all the glory. Father, help our lives to fulfill what you want us to do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. You may shake hands with one another and say God bless.